Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with how to make and serve a holiday cheese board. That's right, tis the season when we attempt to entertain impressively while using a minimum amount of effort. And whether it's for family coming over for a holiday feast or just a bunch of buddies coming over to watch the game, few things work as well for entertaining than an array of delicious cheeses. And while very simple to put together, there are some tips and tricks you should know. So I thought I would share my thought process behind putting one of these boards together. And first and foremost, that starts with our selection of cheese. So let's go ahead and begin with my first choice, which is a gorgeous soft French goat cheese that's made wrapped in chestnut leaves, which goes by the name of, I'm going to need the caption for this one. Oh boy. Goes by the name of Le Mothas Sir Fouille. Just kidding. I've been practicing. It's actually closer to Le Motisse Fouille. But anyway, I like to start off my cheese boards with something soft and earthy and creamy. And what I'll do for presentation's sake is go ahead and slice this in half to reveal that gorgeous white center. And yes, we're definitely going to serve it with those chestnut leaves intact for that extra little holiday touch. And we'll go ahead and place that in first position on our board because I always eat from left to right. And by the way, feel free to use a glass plate or platter, but because people are going to be slicing off pieces of this, I think the wood works so much better. It just sounds and feels a lot nicer. But anyway, let's move on to our second selection, Spain's famous manchego, which is a sheep's milk cheese. And manchego has a very distinctive waxy rind that features indentations made by the grass woven baskets this is aged in. And while it's probably a good idea to trim that off, I do like to leave it on at least one side so people can see it. And then besides that, I'm also gonna cut this one in half, not to reveal anything, but just to make it a little more accessible when people are slicing. And we will go ahead and place that on our board in second position, since that, in my opinion, is our second most intense cheese. Which brings us to our third and final selection, the world-famous English Stilton, which is made from the milk of cows. And as you can see, this is a blue cheese, featuring all kinds of moldy veins. And since this wedge is exposed on all the other sides, we can leave this one side with a darker rind attached. But what I will do is take a knife and even up this front edge for appearance sake. And also I really wanted to taste. And we'll go ahead and transfer that onto our board. And for me, three cheeses is the perfect number. All right, four is too many and may confuse your guests. And two is just a couple cheeses. So I do suggest going with three varieties. And for me, the whole key to a successful cheese board is diversity. Okay, not only do we have cheese made from three different milks, but we have three cheeses that look completely different and feature different flavors and levels of intensity, as well as three different distinctive textures. And for me, it's that variety that makes for a great cheese board. And then above and beyond selection philosophy, the most important tip of all here is to let these cheeses sit out at room temp for at least an hour before you serve them. All right, there's a very old saying that I made up this week, and that's cold cheeses are not bold cheeses. So make sure you place these on your board at least an hour before your guests arrive. And then what we'll do while we're waiting is get our garnishes together. And this time I'm going to be going with some fresh grapes, as well as some dried plums, also sold under the far less sexy name of prunes. And then we'll do some seasonal fruit in the form of persimmons, which are very delicious, not to mention gorgeous. Just be sure you're using the Fuyu variety, since this is the non-astringent variety you can eat raw. And then besides that, I'm also going to go with some candied pecans, which will pair perfectly with our sharp spicy stilton. And then last but not least, I'm also going to do some Membrillo, which is a paste made out of quince, which is basically a really large, almost inedible, giant mutant apple. But when it's cooked down to make this paste, it takes on this amazing fruity floral flavor. And it is the classic accompaniment to Manchego. So I'm going to go ahead and slice some of that up. At which point we can go ahead and arrange our garnishes on the board next to whatever cheese we think they pair best with. And while anything goes with anything here, Next to the stilton, I'm going to go with grapes and the candied nuts. Walnuts are actually a more classic choice, but the pecans work perfectly also. And then we'll go ahead and lay out some of our sliced membrio next to our manchego. And of course, these are just my suggested pairings, as there are so many different things you could go with instead. I mean, you are, after all, the Jesus of your cheeses, and you're the one that gets to decide how best to savor these. I mean, savor these. Which reminds me, I'm going with sort of a sweet and nutty, holiday dessertish type profile. But if you want to go with something more savory, you can do things like olives or marinated vegetables or pickles, mustard fruit, stuff like that. So those decisions are up to you. And half the fun of doing a cheese board. 
But anyway, I went ahead and finished up with my dried prunes and freshly sliced persimmons. And if you can't find those, don't stress. Just go with some apples or pears. And then once our garnishes are set, that's it. We can go ahead and grab a few appropriate cheese knives with which to serve this with. And for this still, we'll go with some kind of spreading knife, since it's kind of soft and sticky. But for the manchego, we'll go with something that can slice and stab. And those holes you see are to reduce friction. Or maybe it's supposed to look like Swiss cheese. Maybe both. And then for our goat cheese, we'll go with a combination of a knife good for spreading, slicing, and stabbing. And then besides our utensils, the only other thing we're going to need would be some bread, crackers, and or crisps. And since I have three cheeses, I'm going to go with three selections. I have some sliced baguette for my Stilton, some very neutral, almost flavorless water crackers for my Manchego, and also some rustic rye crisps that I think are going to be perfect with my goat cheese. And finally, assuming our cheese is warmed up for at least an hour, we can start enjoying this professionally designed, thoughtfully composed cheese board. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with my softest and mildest offering, which would be our French chestnut leaf wrap goat cheese, which as I mentioned should pair perfectly with this rye crisp, since it has a mild but sort of earthy flavor. And that really was an incredible bite, especially since we let that cheese warm up and all those flavors were able to develop. So do not rush your cheese board. And I went ahead and chased that with a slice of persimmon. And what about the prunes? No comment. And then I'll follow that up with a slice of manchego that if you haven't had before, you should taste on its own to appreciate its beautiful, slightly sweet, slightly tangy, nutty flavor. And for me, this is sort of right in the middle of the intensity scale between the mild goat cheese and the spicy Stilton. And then I'll enjoy some honor cracker, although way too little. That's why I'm only going to bite half. And we'll put another piece on this other half, along with the classic garnish of Membrio. And the reason I want a neutral cracker is that combination is so insanely delicious, I don't want anything getting in the way. And I know I just said you could garnish with anything you want, but seriously, if you do the Manchego, get the Membrio. And then I'll go ahead and finish up with my third and most intense selection, the very pungent and spicy Stilton, which I'm going to serve on baguette. And for me, those three bites in that order really highlight what a cheese board should be. And because our Stilton is so strongly flavored, that's why refreshing our palate with a sweet nut and a juicy tangy grape is the perfect way to go. And that will reset our palate and we can start all over again or switch it up and go in reverse order. But anyway, that's it. My approach to constructing and serving a cheese board. Okay, I don't want you to focus so much on the specific cheeses I used, but more so why I made the selections. All right, I wanted three different milks, three different textures, three different flavors, three different appearances and so forth. And don't forget, the people at the cheese shops love to help you put these things together. So take advantage of their expertise. But regardless of what you use, I really do hope you try to put your own cheese board together soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.